Okay, now I'm moving on and I'm working with some colors that are opaque. So I'll hold this up to show you if that helps. Um, I made this kind of taupe color. It's really meant to match this, but I can basically go over that. It's a little patchy, so I can go over that to kind of define some of the things that I'm seeing, some of the details there. But I want to start from the back, work my way forward first. So I made this kind of cool white. It's got some of this in there. Um, and this is made with yellow ochre and black um, and some burnt, burnt sienna. So together, very neutral color. So this is kind of a, a greenish color that I'm going to use, but really actually very white, very kind of a gray white. And I just, I want to, uh, I want to make that back wall closer to the color I'm seeing. It's kind of a greenish looking white. So, so I'm going to start, I'm going to take this and basically I started in this corner a little bit already. It goes actually kind of comes down through here. I see actually a line there. I don't need to be a slave to that, but it helps to break up the background somehow. And so the swan looks yellow next to it and that helps differentiate that. If I come in here with this lighter color, it really helps the head stand out and it helps these leaves kind of pop out in space. So it's to my advantage to really use that background color. Nice. It's a nice color to bring out that negative space there. Where this is more yellow, I can um, use a more yellow ochre color for that. I think it needs to be a little bit darker than that. So because I don't want it to stand out. I need to mix it with a palette knife. And it's not necessary I do too much, you know? I can really just, if I can fade this and let the just be blue, gray at the bottom, that's fine. It's probably enough right there. Back behind the urn, I see a change in color and it's a little bit warmer. That's something that will actually bring out the leaves. So it's worth putting in. I'm gonna go with what I'm seeing there and make a slightly warmer color back. So it's gonna have some yellow ochre in it and black. I want it to be neutral. So things that are neutral, sink to the background. Things that are saturated come forward. You know, there's all this high contrast things come forward. Low contrast sort of sinks to the background. Um, this is, so this is the wall color, which is kind of what I have here. So I don't think I need to really do much to that. Yeah, I think that's fine. I think I'm going to actually take this down a little bit further. And then I'm going to make a lighter color for the table back here. So this will help my flowers pop out. Uh, so there's, there's also a little bit of this warm color back here. I want to suggest it without getting too detailed. So I'm just going to kind of pull some of those browns in there. Um, I left out this creature that was there because it wasn't necessary for the composition. So I just left it out. That's, you can do that. That's, that's a choice, you know? As long as it wasn't something critical, it's, it's fine. That deals with the background for me. And now I'm going to go back in and deal with the foreground. I wanted to do a little bit more to this swan planter. The lights need to get lighter, but also I need to get a little bit more warmth and structure into the shadow side. But I am going to start with some lighter lights. The lights that I have are very warm. So the light that I'm putting on top now is very cool for contrast. So just, I added a little tiny bit of blue to it. So as you see, I added some highlights, but unfortunately my shoulder got in the way of the camera, so I just jumped ahead. Um, I, you can use a small brush for these, but you can also turn your brush on its side, if it's a bigger one, and pull your mark. So it, you just wanna be, remember to be cognizant of every brush stroke. Every brush stroke has a purpose. If you put down a brush stroke you don't like, you can either scrape it off with your palette knife and then wipe it with a wet rag, or you can add another brush stroke to help correct it. So that's how you go forward. Add a brush stroke, add another brush stroke, but think about each brush stroke and what it is you're trying to do with, with each one. Now where I have so much light converging right here, this is kind of a problem compositionally. I'm gonna wipe that off. And I'm going to cheat a little bit. What I'm going to do is exaggerate the light a little bit so that it really seems to come forward. Just like in the swan, this is a cool light so that it'll stand out against what's already there. I 
actually see a little bit down here too. All right, and then we'll take some this grayer color, just tone this a little bit. And then I want to do a little bit of softening here, that edge. Now here I want to go back in with that this taupe color that I made and just uh, unify it, really work out the structure that I'm seeing. This, urn, this ellipse is having a bit of a problem, so I'm going to take, I think I'm showing more than I actually see, but what I can do is fix this back part right here. We see this a little bit, definitely some light here, but then it stops, and then we get this shadow in there. So some of that's got to come off, I think, turn it into the background. And now for the flowers. You can think of this as really a three-step process. I have the darks, the really dark shadow blues, and now I'm adding a more intense color on top. So it's ultra green blue with some white, but it's very much a middle tone and very intense. And now I'm adding the highlights on top of it, and I want to put some highlights in everywhere I see them. And it's not necessarily seen from all sides. Not all the flowers are gonna, you're gonna see that clearly. So, so just suggesting it really does a, goes a long way. Um, I can do the same thing here. You know, our eye connects so much of what we see. So allow your eye to do what it does. So I'm using a mixture of cadmium red and cadmium yellow with white to make a light, almost peach color. It's the lightest color I see in those tulips. And I'm placing that in there. And then I'm going back with the pure cadmium just to get some of that contrast in red that you see. The next thing is I'm going to make a shadow color with cadmium and a little bit of black, and you get this sort of velvety purple color, um, mostly at the bottom of them, gives them a little bit more substance. And for the pink flowers that are in the swan planter, I am going to use alizarin crimson to really show the differences between the reds. It's a much more pinker red, so it looks a little bit more like the um, magenta color that you're seeing, even though it's not, by contrast. So lots of white in there. I'm putting down a um, medium color, and think about the brush strokes, pulling them or out or in, whichever is easiest. Then I'll make a lighter color, mix it with some white, and add some light highlights to get the full effect. So I just added a lighter pink, so more white mixed in with the alizarin, to the outside edges of these flowers. So I'm going back in with the leaves, with the green that I made from ultramarine blue and yellow ochre. Now I'm going to try a little bit darker color. I'm actually going to mix black into this because there's some moments where you just want it really dark as it comes. It's in front of all those lights and it's automatically going to look darker if it's in front of a bunch of lights. So you might as well push that difference. It's just going to be more convincing. When something is really dark, it's sometimes hard to know. Is it really green? Is it blue? It's hard to see colors when th things are dark. We really see colors more in the middle area of, you know, middle range of color, just the way our eyes are designed. That gives me some more of the greenery. I'm going to put some greenery in here also. I haven't done much here either. I could suggest Again, just a little couple of moments of green. We talked about gesturing those. You can still do that uh, in and around the flowers some. Like I said, not everything has to connect. So, okay, this is easy to connect that, but if it didn't quite connect, it's okay. A leaf or two 